Welcome back. I am Brandon from South Australia, and today we're ranking 100 popular self-improvement books. We're going to start with the wealth category. And the first book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, an absolute classic. What a fantastic book. One of the first books I read. That's got to be a solid 4.5. Completely changed my mindset around creating money. Next up, Think and Grow Rich, an absolute classic. Upon further research, I think there's some sketchy stuff about how Napoleon Hill went about this book. With that said, some of the principles are very good. They're timeless. We'll go a 3.5 for now. Basically, my rating system is 5. That's like God tier. 4.5 is excellent. 4 is good. 3.5, not bad. 3, yeah, okay. 2, psh, and 1 just in the trash. Coming to the richest man in Babylon. So I can say this book in like one sentence, which is put aside 10% of your money for the rest of your life, period. You could definitely live life without this book. I'm just going to put it in the sort of meh category for now. Next up, F You Money by Dan Locke. Well, if you want to make money, great. Not super keen on the author after learning more about what goes on. <laughs> Feel free to do your own research. But the book's good. Yeah, we'll give it a four. Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. Uh, seven Principles for Financial Freedom. We'll stick it in the 3.5 category. The Millionaire Fast Lane. I'm no millionaire, so don't listen to me. Read the book yourself. Oh, 4.54, 4.54. 4. I'm, I'm going to give it a 4.5. That's an excellent book. Benjamin Graham, The Intelligent Investor. This is commonly uh, recommended by Warren Buffett. So I'll give it a four. Dotcom Secrets by Russell Brunson. Russell Brunson is probably one of the top marketers in the space at the moment. He created ClickFunnels, which most people use for their sales pages. You'll sell things if you really apply this. So I'm sort of hovering between 4 and 4.5. Yeah, we'll go 4.5. I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Classic personal finance book. Yeah, it's it's good book. It's good book. Yeah, not bad. The Millionaire Next Door. Honestly, can't remember much about this book, but the basic idea is what it says in the title. Um, yeah, it's all right. Uh, Total Money Maker by Dave Ramsey. Uh, Dave Ramsey helps people get out of crippling debt. I don't know what's going on over there in the US, but it doesn't look pretty. Where to place this? Oh, will help you get out of debt. There's some, some good principles in there. I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty straightforward, but they work if, if you make it work and put in the effort. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a four. Psycho-Cybernetics. Yeah, that's a, that's a four. Everyone loves this book, I, I noticed, in the, in the self-improvement book space. Thinking Fast and Slow, one of the first books I read. This is very comprehensive on human behavior and psychology. Some fantastic studies done by Daniel Kahneman and his co-author, I forgot his name. But yeah, they really go in depth to like 20 different like cognitive biases. So if you're into that sort of intellectual world and understanding your mind and, and, and yeah, these cognitive patterns, uh, fantastic book. This is probably the go-to book for that. So yeah, we'll give it a solid four. The Power of Habit. I feel this drags on a bit, but the principles are good. So we'll, we'll, we'll put it on in 3.5. Outliers. Don't remember squat about this. We're just going to put it in the three for now. I just heard Malcolm Gladwell. Everyone's reading Malcolm Gladwell. So let's read Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell. Speaking of Malcolm Gladwell, we have The Tipping Point. I believe I did a book summary on this, but this one is another one I read so long ago, I honestly can't remember much. But I remember it being slightly better than The Tipping Point. So we'll give it a 3.5. Flow. Fantastic book. Oh, I'm close to putting it in the 4.5. But just after reading some more uh, spiritual books that I feel go more in-depth into the mind... I'm tempted to put it in the four rather than 4.5. So we're sort of hovering. Maybe what we'll do is we'll bring it across and put it high in the fours. There you go. Nice little snuggly spot for you. Next up, Emotional Intelligence. Uh, this is one of my most popular book summaries on this channel. Uh, feel free to check it out. There's a link in the description below. Seems the corporate world is obsessed with emotional intelligence. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I'll give it a 3.5. Next, Mindset by Carol Dweck. That's a solid read. We're gonna give that a four. Next, we've got a funny book. It's called Civilization and Its Discontents. I first found out about this book through Ty Lopez's reading list. Just a very interesting book. I remember when I was over in Hawaii, I had like this anxiety crisis and I was like hanging out with the homeless people, like sitting on the ground, having a terrible day. 
picked this up at the bookstore and it offered some solace of some sort. I remember suggesting this book to someone else but they completely didn't resonate with it. So this one's like a coin toss I reckon. But yeah, I'm gonna go with a solid four as well. The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem, good book. Learned Optimism, I read this a long time ago. One of my first books I picked up. Don't remember much about it. We're gonna put it in the three for now. All right, it wasn't even recording. Uh, let's resume. Next up, Freakonomics, the infamous Apple book cover. Yeah, not that good. We're actually gonna go for our first two here, which is psh, pff, unreal. Just, uh, yeah, like you could live without this book. Drive by Daniel Pink. This is a pop psychology book. You can definitely go without reading this. May even go in the two category. Yeah, you know what we're going to. Sorry, Daniel Pink. I know you put a lot of work into this book, but we just don't need it. Next up, Evolutionary Psychology by Dr. David Buss. This is one of Ty Lopez's number one book recommendations. It's a big ass textbook. I think they use it at university and read this one front to back. And yeah, it's got some good uh, stuff in it. At least when I was going through my phase of psychology, these days I turn more to sort of spiritual uh, ideas, meditative practices, as opposed to using sort of evolutionary psychology as a way to learn about and learn about my behavior. Uh, you can comp completely override your biology and evolution. So this is why I feel this book is not the most conducive to self-improvement. You definitely don't need to read the whole textbook. So uh, I don't really know where to put this one, somewhere in the middle. But yeah, you can see my subconscious is going to three here. It's like it was meant to be. So let's pop it here. Moving on to Influence, The Psychology of Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. We got a video book summary of this, so check it out. You don't need to read the whole book. I would put this, that's good, it's, it's good, it's good. Let's give it a four. Stumbling on Happiness, this is another pop psych book. Uh, we just don't really need it. Sorry, Daniel Gilbert, I know you put a lot of work into this too. Actually, oh, we, we could put it three, but my intuitive answer is two. So, you know, it's hard to do this tier list. It's, it's difficult. There's so many great books, but when we're ranking them, something's got to gotta shove. All right, we're entering a new category, Ancient Wisdom, uh, starting with The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Everyone loves this book. Oh. Yeah, 3.5. Next up, Ego is the Enemy, Ryan, Ryan Holiday. Honestly, this has got to go on the sort of somewhere in between. I don't know. I remember reading this book, but I don't remember taking like anything from it. It just went completely over my head and maybe that was my own ego not wanting to see the truth in the book on the shortness of life oh heck yeah let's jack it up to 4.5 yeah read it fantastic book just read it get it get it now uh next up the obstacle is away by ryan holiday i remember this being a very solid read just a very positive book uh next up meditations by marcus aurelius we'll pop this in four next up we got as a man thinketh by james allen we'll give this a four two Next up, we got Letters from a Stoic by Seneca. I can't quite remember things resonating a lot, so we'll put it in 3.5, uh, but I believe the ideas uh, are very good, much like meditations. Cool, next up, we got The Immortality Key by Brian Muro Rescue. Yeah, the secret history of the, what is it? The religion with no name. So he was on the Joe Rogan podcast and researched psychedelics and its influence on spirituality and where psychedelics lie within the ultimate truth. So very interesting, very interesting stuff. I found the book to be a little bit hard to follow and maintain my attention at times, yet that doesn't discredit all the work that Brian's put into it. So I reckon a 3.5. What do we have next? The Laws of Human Nature. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm not like a super fan of Robert Greene, I feel like sort of the books are written to sell. I feel like there's just a little something missing with Robert Greene's work, actually. You know, it's kind of neatly put together. These are the laws of human nature, but I don't feel it comes from a place of true understanding. It's more so just some observations made by an author who is selling books. That's just the truth that I see in it. 3.5. Next up, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That is a solid four. Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. Understanding the mind and behavior patterns. I don't know. At the time it seemed good, but I don't feel like I ever derived much practical stuff from it. And I feel like Tony was just sort of guessing with nutrition. So it's okay. My intuition would say it's a three. My conscious mind would try and make it a three to five, but we're gonna listen to intuition. We're gonna pop it on three. The 
four agreements. I remember this being a solid read. The power of positive thinking. I'll give it a 3.5. The magic of thinking big. Yeah, I think this could motivate and inspire a lot of people. But for me, just didn't do a lot. So good principle. But yeah, there's just so many other cool books. I've got to put it somewhere. Next up, we got Self-Reliance by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Uh, it's been a long time since I read this. Put it somewhere in the middle, but honestly, I, I'd have to go over that book again. It's one of those books you just need to pick up again and, and see. Walden by that dude who exited society, went out to live by a lake in this little cabin in the woods, 3.5. The Road Less Traveled. I don't remember that changing my life a whole lot, but it was very popular back in the day. All those boomers. Managing oneself. Or oh, we're either going 4 or 4.5. Oh, what's our intuition saying? Oh, I reckon it's like a 4.2 or something, so we'll go 4. Uh, this is a recommendation from Ty Lopez. Particularly interesting, I guess, for entrepreneurs, business owners, managers. But really, anyone can pick this book up and read it. How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Excellent. 4.5 stars. We've got a video book summary. Check it out. Oh, no. And we've got The Trash Heap. Dianetics by L. Ron Hubbard. So he's the guy who runs uh, or created Scientology, the religion that cooks people's brains. <laughs> Horrible book. I remember walking down Adelaide, my, my local city here in Australia, walked into that uh, personality quiz sign place. I thought that sounds interesting. And before I knew it, I was being sucked into Scientology. I got to say, though, I'd give that an extra point because of the cover. The cover is awesome. Look at that volcano. That's some artwork. That's some artwork, my man. Next, Atomic Habits. That is just a solid four. Great read. Excellent. We've got a video book summary for that too, made recently. Check it out. Next up, The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. This has been flying off the, the bookshelves and Amazon charts for years now by Mark Manson. Oh, I'd have to say a 3.5. Code of the Extraordinary Mind. I just remember really loving this book. So we're going to whack it in the 4.5 category. Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Heck, we'll give him a solid four. I just love uh, Goggins' voice, his personality. Doesn't even like matter what he says. It's just the rating is purely for Goggins. I think one point that's interesting that has recently come up in the self-improvement space is that Goggins is running away from his trauma. It's not often brought up because we're all celebrating and being motivated by him that we tend not to look at that, that side of things. He does have a new book out, by the way, so if you're a Goggins fan, check that out as well. Next up, 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. I'll give it a solid four. Quiet by Susan Cain. So this is a book about introverts. I don't feel like if you're already introverted, you already know yourself pretty well. You don't really need this book. I'm going to have to actually put it in three. The Body Keeps the Score. Uh, this is one of the most highly recommended books. I guess I have to put it in 3.5 because I haven't really gone full into it to apply it. So what would I know? Oh man, this is straight up in the five category. Our first five. The Amanic of Navar Revacant. Can't recommend this book enough. Just just if you're into the self-improvement space, success, just living a better life. Navar Ravikant is a fantastic thinker in this modern age. Check out the Joe Rogan episode if you haven't already. This book is just fire. The audio book, fantastic. Pop a listen. I can't say enough good things about this book. A History of Mankind Sapiens by Yuval Noah. I'm skeptical about this guy. I feel like he works with, uh, what's that dude? The World Economic Forum German guy that's going to take over the world. I have concerns about Yu Yuval Noah. I don't even know how to say his name. I have concerns about his ties with and, and his intentions as well. So, well, you know, I'm tempted to chuck it in the trash, actually. I don't trust the guy. I think there's some good stuff in there, but I just don't trust the guy. I guess I'll have to give it a two. The extra points are just for... Um, I don't trust it. It's got to be a one. Next up, Own the Day, Own Your Life by Aurelian Marcus. I remember this being just a fantastic book. I think you still got to be vigilant with this book. Just because someone shares a workout routine doesn't mean it's the best for you. Next up, Miracle Morning. Uh, yeah, it's a 3.5. High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard. He's kind of like a Tony Robbins. Yeah, a solid four. Grit. I didn't like this book. Give it a two. Essentialism, we're going to have to chuck that in 3.5. Principles, Ray Dalio, that's a solid read. I'm tempted to chuck it in the 4.5 category. I really like Ray Dalio. Personally, I get a, a great energy from him. He's a uh, hedge fund manager, 
and yeah, this book sold like wildfire. The Powerful en Engagement, eh, we'll give it a three. I wasn't super chuffed by this. Kind of a pop psychology book. You can live without it. Same with The Paradox of Choice. Tools of Titans, that's a solid four. The Five Love Languages, I would have back in the day rated this maybe a five or a 4.5, but as I've learned more about relating with others, it's sort of lost a bit of its power. So understanding your partner's way of how they feel loved, it's okay, but the five love languages are actually all like ego-based when you really get to the truth of it. So wanting to be physically touched, that's just sensory pleasure and, and that's all within the ego mind and, and desire. So if we're really looking at true, deep, spiritual, divine love, then the five love languages won't help you. Therefore, we're going to have to put this down probably in the three. I think there's a time and place for it, but no, there isn't actually. You just don't need that book. You just don't need it. Actually, we'll put it in the trash. Uh, well, I, I like to I like to reserve the, the trash rating for the ones that are really like, you know, burn it type thing. So we'll, we'll give it a two. There you go, love languages. You can uh, live on for a bit more. Next up, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Kind of pop psychology I don't feel like it stresses enough that we can transcend those perceived limits of what men and women are and how they act. So I don't know, we'll give it a three. You can definitely live without this book. Sex at Dawn. Sex at Dawn by Christopher Ryan. One of Joe Rogan's friends wrote this book, you know, about monogamy, is it true? And there's some truth to it. So this isn't a bad book. Uh, I know Elliot Hulse has some things to say about it. I might leave a video uh, in the description about this. I don't know. We're going to put it in 3.5. Somewhere in between. Attached. So this is about attachment styles and relationships. So becoming self-aware of that, I think, can be, yeah, a great self-awareness tool. Mm, hovering between 3.5 and 4 here. Yeah, it's a good book. We'll put it in 4. I'm just not interested in marriage, um, so I'm really not the guy to be rating a, or ranking a marriage book. I'm not married. I can't remember much about it, to be honest. We've got a book summary of it. I don't know. I'm going to have to put it in three. Next up, The State of Affairs. This is great. We're going to have to go to 4.5. I feel like there's a truth bomb. This author, Esther Perel, yeah, really dives into why people cheat, and, and she acknowledges the reality. And she goes into what real love is, which is a non-attached energy. Whereas most relationships these days, and have been for a long time, are, are just based on demands from y your partner and stopping them from using their free will. And it, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So I like this dose of truth. That is a 4.5. The Rational Male. Now, I, I would have rated this a big fat 5 during my whole alpha male phase. Um, <laughs> It's one of the most viewed videos. I've thought about taking it down, actually. But uh, as I move more on the spiritual path, I've just noticed an energy in the author Rollo Tomasi. He might cook me for this in this video. And if so, so be it. But there is a conniving energy about Rollo Tomasi. And you can see this with his videos about Jordan Peterson's daughter. You can just see this, this dark energy. And it's not to say that it's good or bad or Rollo Tomasi is good or bad. Uh, there's no judgment in that sense. But it's simply making an observation and lining it up with my goals of becoming a more compassionate and loving being. This book doesn't check out for that goal. I just, I don't trust. I just don't trust it. So, I don't know. We'll have to pop it in the two. Leave it some points for truthful observations about the human condition. Models. Attract women through honesty. This is great. Uh, I find this is a lot more positively oriented. And I like the author too, Mark Manson. So, we'll give it that a four. The Game by Neil Strauss. Man, I love him as a writer. He would be a fat five in terms of his writing. Uh, his book called The Truth is fantastic. Just a page turner. I remember reading that book and I was just so compelled. I think I read it in one or two sittings and man, just a page turner. So his writing's fantastic. In terms of the actual content, really, you're just learning to manipulate people and that's not an energy I am fond of anymore. So yeah, this would have been a big fat five back in the day, but rating it now... two or three. Next up, we've got No More Mr. Nice Guy. I think this is a great self-awareness piece for men. Yeah, I'd give it a solid 4.5. How to be a 3% man. I no longer trust Corey Wayne a lot. 
And there's just a bit of a manipulative vibe to him in my opinion. So, you know, we, we can't put that too high, but it does have some actually great principles in there. So I won't deny that. So three, 3.5, we'll, we'll actually put it in 3.5. The Way of Men, really didn't enjoy this much. It's a two from me. The Way of the Superior Man, I no longer trust David Data much either. It's got some decent principles in there, but I feel like it can get a bit wishy-washy. I don't feel like the author has full conviction in what he's saying. Mm, I think my intuition's saying go to two, so we'll go to oh, 2.5, really. The Mystery Method, uh, How to Manipulate Women, the Bible of that. Uh, this is one of the OG original books. If you're getting into that pick up women type thing, three. The One Thing, so now we're entering productivity. This is great. I'll give it a solid four. Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. Yes, we'll give that a solid four as well. The Four Hour Work Week, I'm gonna give that a fat 4.5. Next up, we got Deep Work by Cal Newport. Honestly, can't remember a lot about it, but it talks a lot about distractions. Give it a 3.5. Getting things done. Uh, it's a whole framework and system for <laughs> getting things done. Surprise, surprise. Uh, I never really used it that much, but there are some solid principles in there that are timeless, so uh, we'll give it a 3.5. Range. I really like this book. Yeah, I'm bordering between 4 and 4.5. We'll put it in the excellent category. This, uh, this sort of, yeah, exploded in popularity from what I understand, and... Um, such a simple idea, but it really countered my ongoing idea that you need to focus on one thing. How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's actually, I used to love this book, but uh, now it's like I sort of see through it. You're really playing games with people in this one. One of the games you play is like using their name three times. And it's this very rigid, systematic way of going about socializing rather than being your true, authentic self. It can get you results. That's the great thing about it. But... You're essentially just manipulating people. You're manipulating yourself to then manipulate the other. It's not the energy I vibe with anymore. I feel like so hippie saying that. So anyway, I'm gonna have to put this at three. Yeah, not like a big fan of this book anymore, eh? Never Eat Alone. So this is about networking. I'll just give it a three. It's all right. Atlas Shrugged, four. I have to go with Evan Carmichael on this one. It's just so dense, I couldn't get through it. It's like 1,200 pages, infamously huge. A lot of people hate Ayn Rand, the author of this, because um, she kind of talks about the virtue of selfishness and being selfish to win in life. And I'd have to agree, I think it's a bit mis... <laughs> not a bit, very misleading. Um, yeah, I can understand where she's coming from. I'm gonna pop it in the two. A new Earth, I always forget what's in this book as opposed to the power of now. My intuition's saying in the middle somewhere. Joe Dispenza, really like the cool scientific research he's doing and how he's linking that to our understanding of consciousness. There's, yeah, I don't feel a lot of people that goes into the depth that Joe Dispenza does. And from what I understand, he's got a lot of very successful clients doing these meditative practices. So yeah, props to him. I think he's doing some great work, but doesn't hold the ultimate truth. So I can't put him in the 4.5 or 5 category. Inner Engineering by Sadhguru. So we've entered the spiritual category now. Some popular ones. Poor. It's hard to rate spiritual books. And my ratings come down to the conviction of the teacher and their, their understanding. And I can only rate at my level of understanding, of course, but I'm just using my intuition. Yeah. Four is what I'm going to say here. Power of Now. Oh. Yeah, that's a big 4.5. If you can understand what's being said in this book and have a direct experience of stillness, it will just completely shatter your whole life. It will shatter self-improvement, just shatter everything. That's why I got I to rate it up here so highly. I still don't feel the same conviction about Eckhart Tolle like I do in, say, Paramunza Yogananda or Baba Neem Karoli, the truly realized uh, gurus. But Eckhart Tolle was definitely onto one of the most fundamental things you can learn, which is that the, the self, sense of self that we have, it's illusory and responsible for the vast majority of our suffering, if not all. Oh, Dowdy Ching, that is a big fat five. I love this book, read it. The Holy Bible, this one's cooked and corrupt just because of all the translations and just the Council of Nicaea, they completely cooked it. With that said, there are some fantastic things in here with Jesus's lessons, so this is a tricky one. It's somewhere in the middle, we'll give it a three. I'd give it a five for some of the lessons in there, but 
I'd give it like a one because of the corruption. So I guess we have to pop it in three, don't we? <laughs> or 2.5, if we want to be precise. Next up, The Alchemist. Everyone's all about this book. Yeah, it's okay. Like it, it, it didn't do massive things for me. So yeah, it's probably in the near category. Uh, the Miracle of Mindfulness. Nice solid read. Man's Search for Meaning. Now everyone's all about this book. When I was going through my meaning crisis, I this this was the go-to book. But there's actually a book I read. I think it's called Existential Psychotherapy by Irvin D. Yalom. And in one of his books, I think one of his own biographies, he's got a book where he actually discusses his encounters with Viktor Frankl and mentioning how I feel sincerely that Viktor Frankl wasn't sort of all he all he was cracked up to be. There was just sort of a weird vibe. So not many people know about this. I think it may be worth investigating. Yeah, and it sort of changed my opinion of, of this book. I think this can be a very powerful book for those who have been experiencing immense suffering. So yeah, I don't really want to demote it. Um, so somewhere in the 3.5. Be Here Now by Ram Dust makes me happy. We'll give it a four. You can't buy the ebook. You've, you've got to get the physical copy. Otherwise it just doesn't work. Letting Go by David Hawkins. Fantastic book. I'll say 4.5. This comes highly recommended. I really enjoyed it. But yeah, be careful not to get lost in models of spirituality like I often do. The Trap by David Icke. Oh, big fat five, mate. That is a big fat five. Big fat five. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.